The prosecution strikes back, fighting to keep its case alive in the Karen Reed trial, turning to physical evidence to prove its case. May it please the viewers, I'm Rich Schoenstein. Welcome to True Crime MTN. We're going to spend a little more time talking about this Karen Reed case. Boy, was this a crazy week with a lot of stuff in it. Uh, we talked about some of it earlier in the week, and I want to catch you up. Again, the synopsis. Karen Reed is accused of backing up her SUV into her then-boyfriend, Boston police officer John O'Keefe, driving off and leaving him to die. Her defense team says she didn't do that, and in fact, she was framed. John O'Keefe was killed by people inside the house and then dumped outside and the blame put on her. Now, when I last left you, we were talking about the horrendous testimony of Trooper Michael Proctor from the Massachusetts State Police Department. He was the lead investigator on the case. He had those horrendous text messages uh, calling her names, indicating that he had made a determination right away about blame, indicating bias. We went over that. You can check out prior videos in this feed if you like. That was terrible, and it really left the prosecution reeling. But I told you in my last video, the prosecution is still prosecuting this case. They're still here. The judge and the jury are still here. Karen Reed is still here. And this case is still going forward. And the last two days have been much better, much better for the Commonwealth. Not conclusive yet, I don't think, but much better. First, you had another detective, Lieutenant Tully, and he testified about taillight pieces and the fact that John O'Keefe's sneaker had been found in the snow. There had been some speculation early on in the case that his sneaker had disappeared forever. Lieutenant Tully also told you about 53 telephone calls placed by Karen Reed to John O'Keefe in between the hours of 12.33 a.m. and 6.03 a.m., on the night in question, January 29th, 2022. Very significant because her story had been that she went back to his house, went to sleep and woke up later. And now there's evidence that she was calling him frantically. There was also evidence that she made other phone calls in the wee hours of the morning, including to her parents, all of which looks bad for her. There was also evidence from officer from Lieutenant Tully that she drove around in the trip where she left her house and went to pick up Jen McCade. She was actually driving around for 18 minutes or so, and there was speculation that she easily could have driven back to the Albert house where John O'Keefe's body was and then to the McCabe house. Again, that's not enough to find guilt but it does put some suspicion on her. The next witness was Tess Chart from Bode Labs, and that testimony was offered to show that a hair found on Karen Reed's bumper, rear bumper, was John O'Keefe's, was consistent with him. There was, uh, and then the next witness, Andre Porto from the Massachusetts State Police Crime Unit, he testified that the DNA from the hair matched John O'Keefe and that the DNA on the drinking glass found in the snow matched John O'Keefe. That took you up to this morning. And this morning started off with a massive swerve, that being basically an hour and a half or so where the feed went dead. There was an issue with a juror. And then as the juror was on her way up to talk to the judge, she was accidentally filmed and shown on all of these live streams that are going on of the trial. And, you know, it's one thing to have cameras in the court, but you never, never permit the jurors to be shown. They're entitled to privacy. We need that to protect the integrity of the system. So the judge was understandably quite upset the juror was shown in the live feed. She ordered the videos immediately shut down. When the trial came back on, it was initially shown by Zoom, and then finally the video was turned on. Multiple jurors were brought up to sidebar and questioned. We don't know about what. One juror was excused. We don't know why, but I'll tell you from experience, you always start out with a number of alternates 
There are so many reasons a juror can be excused. It's usually some sort of personal health-related situation, but it could be anything. It could be that she encountered something that would impair her ability to be a juror. But for whatever reason, one juror was dismissed. Now we got back on with today's testimony. The first witness today was Jessica Hyde, and this was a very good witness talking about the issue of when did Jen McCabe Google HOS, a misspelling of how, host long to die in cold. The defense theory has been that she Googled that at 2.27 a.m. And this witness blew that theory out of the water. She explained in detail that that was Googled much later after 6 a.m. There may have been a tab open in the phone pre prior to that, but not the Googling, and also indicated that Jen McCabe didn't delete any of that as had been previously suggested. And this 2.27 a.m. Google had been a big part of the defense theory. And frankly, they didn't even cross-examine this witness on him. They asked her some questions, but not really about her findings in this regard. I think they're kind of conceding the point. They may have their own witness on it, but they certainly didn't challenge this witness. And, you know, it doesn't really make any sense. Even if you buy a conspiracy, the idea that Jen McCabe was in the house Googling how long does it take to die in the cold to see if John O'Keefe was dead yet, that doesn't make any sense. It never made any sense. Much more likely she Googled it later in the morning. That's what the witness said. Finally, the final witness of the day was Trooper Joseph Paul, also from the Massachusetts State Police, but he's from the CARS unit, and he has experience with accident reconstruction. I was waiting for this testimony. He examined Karen Reed's car. He found scratches, a dent, broken taillight, glass on the bumper, and he says, having examined the data, that the car traveled in reverse over 60 feet uh, at a speed in excess of 24 miles per hour. He says the car was accelerated twice with one of the times with the accelerator being held down for something like 10 seconds. And he testified that the data from the car and John O'Keefe's injuries were consistent with a pedestrian strike. His theory being that the car sideswiped O'Keefe, causing him to rotate and that O'Keefe may have injured his head by crashing into the curb and injuring it on the curb. Uh, after the jury heard that testimony, they were sent home, and the day ended with voir dire because Trooper Paul was also prepared to testify on the question of whether Karen Reed's car hit John O'Keefe's car when it later in the night left his home. There's been some argument that the damage to the taillight was caused because her car backed into his car in his driveway. And apparently Trooper Paul wants to refute that. So they had voir dire. Both attorneys questioned him outside the presence of the jury. I have to say, Ad uh, Alan Jackson for the defense was really fired up. Uh, the lawyers were sort of bickering. They kind of name called at each other. Alan Jackson accusing the prosecution of ambushing them, the prosecution saying, who are they to complain? And the judge said, quit the finger pointing, the name calling. She reserved her ruling. So we'll find out later if she's going to let this testimony in. Just a word about the judge, because I've seen her attacked on social media. She is terrible. She's part of the conspiracy theory. No sale. She's doing a fine job. Trust me. She's being fair balanced, calling balls and strike. I mean, I'm only going by what I see at the trial, but she handled this jury issue well. She's given the defense plenty of latitude to cross-examine witnesses, even though they frequently ask objectionable questions. Whatever conspiracy you want to allege, leave the judge out of it. All in all, that's a pretty big week because it started out very poorly for the prosecution, but ended with some good evidence connecting Karen Reed's car to John O'Keefe's death. And I keep saying that's the key issue in this case. Were his injuries caused by a car or something else? Because even if you speculate that he went inside the home, he didn't get hit by a car inside the home. So if the prosecution can prove that's what caused the injury, 
Karen Reed's in trouble. Next week's schedule, there'll be a full day of trial Monday. Tuesday, there's only going to be voir dire. They're going to bring in some experts. There's still argument about what they can testify on. Wednesday is a holiday. And then Thursday and Friday are full days. So basically next week for testimony in front of the jury, you're going to have Monday, Thursday, Friday. Next week has to be, has to be the week of the medical examiners. I continue to say we need evidence. We need testimony, or I should say the prosecution needs testimony that the injuries caused that John O'Keefe suffered are consistent with being hit by a car. The accident reconstructionist said that, but he's not good enough. We need medical examiners. That has to be the glue, and I suspect is where the prosecution is going to end up with its case. That and probably a little bit more evidence on motive. So they took a real hit earlier in this week. The investigation itself is very problematic. A lot of things they didn't do. Trooper Proctor did a horrendous job for reasons we've discussed. The investigation has problems. But at the end of the day, if the prosecution can prove that John O'Keefe was killed by being hit by a car, that's its case. Will they prove that? Well, that remains to be seen. I'm Rich Schoenstein for True Crime MTN. Like us. Subscribe us. Go ahead, comment away. I read them all. See you next week. We are adjourned. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.